our next speaker. Godman Akinlabi is head pastor at the Elevation Church, Lagos, Nigeria, where he executes his God-given mandate to make greatness common. He's a convener of Vantage Forum, an annual for the career-driven and business-minded. One of the five most influential pastors in Nigeria, Godman's forte is captivating the interests of young people. With his weekly Twitter event, hashtag Mr. And Mrs. Better Health, he reaches and teaches practical tips for building godly relationships. Prior to the Elevation Church, Godman served as an associate pastor for over a decade at Daystar Christian Center and continues to be a member of the faculty of the Daystar Leadership Academy. He is an alumnus of Manchester Business School, England, and is the author of several inspiring books. And now, as he expounds on inspiring genius and the people you lead, please give an ELC welcome to Godman Akilabi. Praise God. I believe what the, the shout is to Jesus, so let's do it very well. Let's give the Lord a big shout this morning. Hallelujah. While you're still standing, I want you to help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are, you are the next to be celebrated. <laughs> Praise God. And also while you're still standing, um, the truth is that you, you, you don't understand how I feel this morning. All right? Yeah. yeah, somebody said, welcome home. Yes. I'm at home. <laughs> Fully at home. While you're still standing, I also want you to help me appreciate my pastors, <laughs> Pastor Sam and Pastor Mika, for the opportunity to be a blessing this morning. Um, I want you to listen to this. I want you to listen to this. If I have anything to say this morning, it's because I have listened to them and it's because they've inspired me beyond what you can ever think about. Yeah. And God has given me platforms around the world just because of my connection with my pastors. Yeah. I want you to appreciate them for me this morning. Come on, let's celebrate them all over this place. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Praise God. All right, just a word of prayer and I'm going to speak. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of being a blessing. We thank you for this auspicious moment in destiny. We ask that you use this moment to transform lives radically. Inspire us. Reveal yourself to us. Lift us up to the next level. For everyone joining online from all around the world, we ask this morning, let something shift in the spirit. Let the heavens open and let your hand rest upon us. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. One more time, celebrate Jesus as you take your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to appreciate all my friends who are here this morning. Uh, a lot of people here are praying for me, and I know. And God bless you, all, all of my friends. And oh, uh, I also have some of my associates here this morning. Full support. Entourage from Elevation Church. Can we appreciate all the Elevation Church people? <laughs> Praise God. All right, we're looking at inspiring genius in the people you lead. Inspiring genius in the people you lead. It's no longer, you know, news that I was inspired here at Daystar Christian Center. I mean, it's no longer news that my my pastor happens to be my major source of inspiration. Uh, and um, so inspiring genius in the people that you lead is a topic that I, uh, I took my time to just look through very well. What really inspires people? Okay, let me, let me, let me ask this question. How many, how many of us have been to the movies recently, to the cinema recently, to watch a movie? Have you ever had an experience where you walked into a cinema 
and you came out of the cinema and you're wondering, why did I go there? <laughs> Many people have had such experience where you couldn't make head or tail of the story and you are wondering, I just wasted my money. Has it happened to you before? That's happened to me a few times. And the real issue we're dealing with there is that the story that you paid money to go and watch lacked inspiration. Yeah, it was flat. You know, a good story will have, you know, so many incidences. Some will move you to tears. Some will, will, will grip your heart. Some will inspire you. You know, some will just give you, you know, an understanding beyond what you have ever seen before. I mean, some will be absolutely fun, comical. You see drama. You see intrigues. Sometimes you see suspense. And you're wondering, what's going to happen next? You know, if you haven't read Mr. Lubojidi's book before, and while he was telling his story yesterday, you see some suspense. What's going to happen next? Ah, after somebody has waited for this long, or when somebody, you know, somebody born, you know, uh, with polio and all that, is he really going to be able to drive the car? When his father said, you can't drive this car. Yeah. He trained himself, he drove the car. That was very inspirational. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. And he spoke volume to us to the end that you are the one that can determine what you can do and what you will not do. Yeah. Somebody say with me this morning. Great stories inspire us. And I want somebody here to know this morning that if you want to be a leader that will inspire genius in the people that you lead, your life must be telling a great story. There's a difference between stories and history. When you say history, it sounds like it's story. Somebody else's story. Yeah. Sometimes we derive inspiration from history. But people want to get a lot of inspiration from my story and your story. We listened to Mr. Kandimosu's uh, story yesterday, and it was in the same vein, very moving, very touching. You see all the intrigues. You see all, you know, the different parts of the story that spoke to us. Can I ask somebody a big question this morning? Is the story of your life inspiring anybody? Yeah. You know... <laughs> All of them came from uh, families. When we were talking about the number of people in their family yesterday, I was telling myself, wait for me. Just wait for me because I'm coming. You know, somebody was saying 18 people, right, uh, and then uh, Mr. Alugodi came and said nine. I just wait for me. Yeah. Wait for me. Because we don't, we don't deal with, you know, less than 20. <laughs> I'm from like 26, 27 in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you hearing story? Yeah. And when you are like, you know, you came from a family of 26 children and you are like number 23 or 24. Ordinarily, nobody should expect something big out of your life. Because people have shared all the, they have shared the grace and they have moved on. Before you showed up, yeah. <laughs> I remember a time that uh, my dad was, you know, was talking to us and he said, you know what, uh, anything you like, do with your life. My first son, as at the time I was entering secondary school, my dad's first son was finishing his PhD. And he graduated from University of Ibadan, first class. So when you have a son like that, any other son, if you like, sort yourself out. <laughs> So when you find yourself in the place where I found myself, not only was I at the rank of the ladder, even my mom in the number of wives, because she was like number four, or number five. Yeah, so they are seniors. <laughs> and then you're born with not too many talents, because I don't consider myself to be extremely talented. Yeah, because somebody may be sitting down here and you feel like, uh, you know, my life is plain vanilla. Not so, no, no, not so much talent, yeah. I just want to tell you this morning that you can still live a life that will inspire. You can still be that leader that somebody will look at 
and we say my life can also be significant and it's not a matter of where you are born how you are born because sometimes we're not rightly positioned by birth I would have loved to be the firstborn of 26 children, not number 24. Sounds better to have a singular position. <laughs> like one, two, or first to third, or something like that. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Glory be to God. One thing about being the leader that will inspire other people is that you, you, you need to understand that one of the greatest source of inspiration in this world is excellence. So, Bill Ibels, the great teacher, author, and pastor, who's also been here at uh, Excellence in Leadership Conference before, has this uh, a quote. It says, Excellence honors God and inspires people. Excellence honors God and inspires people. If you become a stickler for excellence, what happens is that you start to rewrite the story of your life. And any good story that people will watch, that people will go out to watch, that will inspire people, must be born out of intentionality. So the script writer will sit down. You know the difference between Hollywood, Nollywood, Bollywood? Yeah. Do you know the difference? One has too many dance moves and all that. You know the one I'm talking about? All the, you, you know the one I'm talking about? That starts with a B. Yeah. One has too many, permit the use of the word, patch, patch stories. Stories that you just patch up, patch up. Uh, not so much of intentionality. You know the one I'm talking about? The one that starts with N. Yeah. But it's another one that has a lot of intrigues. A lot of action, a lot of intentionality. That's the one that starts with the H. Are you still with me? There's something about intentionality that will breed excellence in my life and your life that will make my life very inspiring and a kind of life that people, you know, will read about, will watch, and the people who are right there with you, we see and say, something has to change in my life. In Proverbs 24, uh, when you read from verse 30 to 34, the Bible talks about the lazy man. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 34. It said, I went to the field of the lazy man by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding. And there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone, or its, its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked at it, on it, and received instruction. Message translation said, the field spoke to me. The field of a lazy man. The man, a mediocre man. He said, the field spoke to me. He said, I, this translation, New King James says, I looked and I received instruction. Yeah, I received instruction. And the instruction is a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. He said, so shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. This is the folly of indolence. When you see anything that is not intentional, you see that things start to break down, you see that, 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 that there won't be excellence, you see that it will not be inspiring. In this story of this lazy man, the Bible says that everything around him was going down. And the question we should ask is, how come everything is, was going down and this guy was not paying attention? How come the guy got used to K sera sera, what will be will be. And I tell people that's not the mantra of a Christian. Yeah. It's not the mantra of a Christian. If you are sitting down here today or watching online and you've been saying, what will be will be, K sera sera, your life cannot inspire anybody. Yeah. Anybody can sit down and sing K sera sera. Yeah. But when you become intentional, we start to make things happen. 
We don't wait for things to happen. We don't watch what is happen, happening or wonder what is going on. We make things happen. That's what makes our lives inspirational. That's what makes us inspire other people. But the problem today is that we have too many people who even lack the capacity to, you know, observe what is going on around their own lives and say, what, what do I need to do better? What's going on around me? What do I need to do better? How can I make this story more intentional? How can I have a more intentional approach to the way I live my life? Intentionality separates mediocres from excellence-oriented persons. That's what it does. I check uh, for the dictionary, the meaning of mediocrity. It says, only moderate quality, not very good. Only moderate quality, not very good. And when you check for synonyms of mediocrity, what you see is ordinary, average, middle of the road, uninspired, undistinguished, indifferent, unexceptional, unexciting, unremarkable, run of the mill, pedestrian, lackluster. See those words, forgettable. That means your story will be forgettable. Yeah, it says forgettable. Amateurish, okay, so-so, come see, come sir. Plain vanilla with all the flavors in the world. When they call somebody plain vanilla, it's a problem. <laughs> what happens to strawberry? What happens to chocolate? What happens to? <laughs> plain vanilla. No great shake, not up too much. And the last one says Bush League. <laughs> Bush League. It meant you left your village, but your village did not leave you. <laughs> you are still playing in the Bush League. So it will be, I mean, exceptionally uninspiring. Let's look at the life of a mediocre person or a mediocre leader the one who is not inspiring anybody. Can we dissect a little bit the life of a mediocre man? The life of a mediocre man. This is like saying the anatomy of mediocrity. I once preached a message like that, the anatomy of mediocrity. Can we look at the anatomy of mediocrity? What makes a mediocre leader? As you listen to this, I want you to be careful about something. I want you to appropriate it and size yourself up to answer the question, where do I fall, you know, in the midst of all this?